Colton here from Modern Robotics. We're going to take a look at another application for the optical distance sensor, a sensor that measures reflected light coming back from the surface it's looking at, which can change based on distance or the material or color it's looking at. In this case, we're going to keep the distance the same. We're going to change the color that's looking at. So we're going to look at either white or black sections of this wheel. So we have this wheel here that spins and we put black and white stripes going on that wheel. And there's the optical distance sensor that's pointed at the wheel so that it looks at different colors as that goes around. We're going to use optical distance sensor and in a minute optical distance sensors to measure how far that wheel has gone. Now with this first setup we only have one optical distance sensor and it's pointing at the wheel and we'll be able to tell when we see white and then when we transition to black and then when we transition back to white again. So we'll be able to tell that it went uh, one more step around that wheel. There are 14 sections around the wheel, seven white and seven black. So all we can tell is every time it goes past the section. So let's take a look at that. And we initialize the robot. I'm gonna say play. The top value you see here, up there, is the optical distance sensor reading. We are taking the value that's coming back from FTC SDK, scaling it by 1023 so that we get a 10-bit uh, value. That's the value that the um, quarterback's interface is getting from the sensor. The next is the state. So you can see state up there, state. For this, there's only two states. We've got one sensor and we have two colors. So that one sensor can be looking at white, uh, which is state zero, or it can be looking at black, which is state one. Every time that state changes, only when it changes, so when the current state is different than the previous state, then we will increase count. So you can see that here we go two, three, four, five, and it'll keep going up if we go keep going around. Here we're at 21. Um, if I go up to, I said there's 14 sections, so if we go up to 28, we're at 28, oops, we keep going up. So we can't go back down. That's the issue with only having one sensor, is that every time it switches, no matter if it's switching from white to black, black to white, whichever direction, it's always gonna count up because it doesn't know which direction it's going. It just knows it's going from black to white or white to black, and then we keep counting up. You can see here, we have the uh, LED on the front of the core device interface turning on when we see white, so we can visualize what the sensor is seeing uh, as far as where our threshold is for that. So that's gonna be the first part of this. The second part is we're gonna take this the next step. We're gonna actually know which direction the wheel is spinning as well as where it has got to how far it has spun. So I'm gonna stop the program. And uh, in order to know how far or which direction the wheel is spinning, we need two optical distance sensors. I'm gonna to change to my other program and we're gonna first just take a look at the lights on the front of the core device interface. Um, and you'll be able to see that right now there's a red light illuminated. And if I change that a little bit, now there's a blue and red light illuminated. If I change a little bit more, there is now only a blue light. Change a little more and there are no lights at all. So that's four stages. It's important that the stripes and sensors are set up such that you get to all four stages. For example, you always want to have a situation when the wheel is spinning that you that both sensors will see white. You'll want a situation where one sees white and the other one doesn't, where the other one sees white and the other one doesn't, and where neither of them see white. You need all four of those stages. If you only have three of them, it'll be just like a previous example where you won't know which direction you're turning. So we have those four states. So now take a look at those lights again and you can see the state. So you can see that now it says state three. If I turn a little more, we're at state one, state zero, state two, and state three. So if I go from three, one, zero, two, three, one, zero, two, three, one, zero, two, I'm turning in this direction. If I go the opposite direction, we're gonna go from three, two, one, zero, one, three, two, zero, one. And that sequence is going the opposite direction when I spin the wheel in the opposite direction. So we can tell based on what the previous state was and what the next state was that we moved 
one fourteenth of the way around the world. And actually now it's one twenty eighth because we have four states going around. So there's one state between each of these sections now. And we know in which direction that turns. So now you can see that our count is six. Let's go back down to zero. If I turn this wheel around one time, we have 28, 28 counts going around. And I can really get this moving uh, here. So that was three times. That was five times. Um, and it's really pretty accurate. So you can spin this around, you can figure out what your, um, what your, your uh, speed is, how fast the wheel is going, your RPM of the wheel by taking that and factoring in time to see how fast you're going around. This is how uh, encoders work on your motors, except they use magnets instead of optics. Depending on what encoders you have. Tetrix encoders use optics, uh, any mark and matrix motors, they use uh, magnets instead of optics on their encoders. Okay, Colton, where are we gonna use this? A very good application for this in FTC is let's say that you have a robot in autonomous mode and you have to drive a certain amount of distance forwards or backwards, but not turning on a dime, you're, you're moving. If you hit something, let's say another robot, well, your wheels are under power. So your robot hits something and your wheels may keep turning, so you may slip. Well, but Colton, I have encoders on my wheels. Yes, but they slip. So when your wheels slip, your encoders are no longer accurate because you don't know how far you slipped. Your encoders don't take that into account. There are some top teams around the world, some who have uh, competed and even won the world championships. Cougars, a great uh, um, former FTC team who used this technique. Uh, they used a different sensor to do so, but they had a odometer wheel in the middle of the robot. So imagine a robot here, and they've got powered wheels on all four corners, and then in the middle, they have their non-powered wheel. There's nothing pushing on this guy except for the ground. So when their robot is not turning, they take this wheel and they lower it down onto the ground, so that as they drive forward, it's gonna turn the wheel. And because there's no force on this wheel, because it's a non-powered wheel, it's not gonna slip. You're gonna know exactly how far you went. You can compare the distance that this wheel is turning with the distance that your powered wheels are turning using encoders and then know if you have slipped. And when you drive forwards, you can drive forwards using the distance that this wheel have got, has gone instead of your powered wheels. In cases where you are likely to run into other robots or field elements or things like that, it's far more accurate to use something like this, uh, far more reliable, because if you hit something, this wheel is not gonna slip. It's gonna actually know how far you have gone.